All right, we'll continue with our media availabilities. I have a special um, visit today from uh, Eric Almarola. Uh, before we uh, get started with the media availability, though, we would, would, would like to uh, reference the uh, announcement we made earlier today, uh, NASCAR and the Ross Initiative in Sports for Equality, also known as RISE, um, announced a new campaign to promote diversity, inclusion, and equality within and outside of sports. And if those of you who haven't had a chance to look at the PSA that will debut uh, this weekend in our broadcast in Michigan, our uh, guest today, Eric Almarola, is going to be uh, featured in that. So if we could uh, cue up the video for those in the room, that would be great. Speak up, speak up, whenever I know discrimination is happening. And I will stand up, get up, rise up for victims. Take the pledge at risetowin.org. It's nice to see you, Eric. Appreciate you uh, participating in that. I know growing up as a Cuban American and, and having a kid, tell us maybe a little bit about why this was important for you to be part of. Well, this is important for me to be a part of, uh, mainly because uh, the diversity program meant so much to me to, to get to where I'm at today. Um, in, in sport and in life, uh, everybody needs some sort of break uh, to make it to where they're at today. And for me, that was my break, uh, was the fact that Joe Gibbs Racing and Reggie White, uh, along with NASCAR, uh, got involved and in, in created a, a diversity program. And uh, I sent in a resume, and, and because of uh, the fact that my family was from Cuba, um, and my background and my heritage, uh, that gave me an opportunity. Uh, and so that was the opportunity that, that uh, got me to, to move from Florida to North Carolina and, and go drive a race car for a living. Um, and so to have that opportunity, um, you know, has is, uh, is, is obviously been very special and very meaningful, me, meaningful uh, for my career. And so this was a great opportunity for me to give back um, and try and continue the awareness um, and, and knowledge about, uh, you know, diversity in our sport and really just creating inclusion um, and equality in our sport. And, and uh, I think NASCAR has done a, a spectacular job uh, with that over the years and, and continuing to grow uh, that demographic and, and, and really make our sport a lot more reflective of, uh, of the demographic of our country. So uh, so it's been fun. It's been good. Yeah, thanks, Eric. And to that point, uh, I ha we have in the media center here today a couple people I'd like to recognize. He referenced NASCAR leading our multicultural development uh, uh, initiatives with Don Harris. Don, can you wave for the group if anyone wanted to talk to her afterwards? And sitting to her left, a special guest from RISE, uh, Hayes Grooms the Fourth, who is the Director of Talent and Partnership at RISE and helped coordinate this activity. Um, Hayes is, is back home. He's a Detroit native, played uh, basketball at the University of Michigan, a school up the street. So uh, if you want to chat with Hayes afterwards, Hayes and Don will both be available. So um, pivoting toward uh, something that you just concluded, which was practice, uh, you were here for the test. So perhaps give us a little bit of a sense of how you feel this rules package is playing out, given what you felt when you first were at this track and what you felt today. You know, uh, today wasn't much different from what we experienced at the test. We only ran uh, maybe 10 laps before the rain came in uh, with this package at the test. Um, and, and me and, and Austin Dillon, I think Kyle Larson and, and Truex were all part of the test. And, and we all, as soon as we ran it, thought, yeah, let's give it a try. Um, you know, obviously, with the, the less downforce, uh, we, we hope, uh, and, and we're, we're all pretty confident that it will create better racing. Uh, at least with the cars behind, they won't be as affected, affected as bad um, with the, the dreaded dirty air that we talk about all the time. So I feel like continuing to, to make the race cars sleeker um, and, and get more and more downforce off the car is going to continue to allow more air to flow to the car's following, and that will in turn put on a better race. And, and, and I'm really excited about the fact that 
um, not only is it really cool to go 220 mile an hour at the end of the straightaway, but that we have to slow down to 180 mile an hour in the middle of the corner. Uh, for a race car driver, 220 20 mile an hour is, is fast and, 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 and it's fun. Um, and it's honestly not that scary because you have to let off the gas and actually go through the corner. What's scary is running 200 mile an hour at the end of the straightaway and running 198 in the middle of the corner. That's, that's what's really scary, um, and it really hurts uh, when a right front tire blows out and you hit the wall. So, um, you know, I think the speed is relative. I, I'm, I'm excited about the fact that we're letting off the gas, we're using the brake pedal um, at a big racetrack like Michigan, uh, and we're getting our middle of the corner speeds down. And when you get that very and speed, um, it creates opportunity. Uh, like I said, when, when you're at the end of the straightaway at 200, 205, and you slow down to 195, 198 mid-corner because uh, the cars have a lot of downforce and a lot of grip and you run practically wide open, uh, there's not a lot of opportunity to pass because the, the, the variation in speed is, is not there. Um, so now with a 40 mile an hour variation in speed, it gives, it gives other guys opportunities. You can drive in the corner a little deeper, you can lift a little sooner, it really um, opens up sort of the driver's toolbox, if you will. Okay. All right. We'll open up with uh, questions from the media. We'll start here to our left uh, with Rachel, and then we'll go to Bob. Uh, the, the PSA that we just viewed. Yep. Uh, we're seeing now in professional sports a lot of athletes and a lot of organizations and, you know, something like uh, the You Can Play initiative where they're taking a stand against anti-discrimination, anti-bullying, anti-sexual assault, anti-homophobia. Why is it important for NASCAR to have a voice in these societal issues? Well, I think, uh, so I'm, I'm going to talk for Eric Amarola being a part of NASCAR. I'm not going to talk for NASCAR. I'll let them do that. But for me... Growing up watching the sport as a young boy, um, it was very evident that the, that the sport was built in the South, um, that it was very uh, a traditional 45-year-old uh, male, white, Caucasian sport, um, and, and that, you know, back in the 80s, 90s, uh, when I was watching the sport. And, you know, our country uh, was, was still sort of that demographic as well, is heavily populated by that demographic. And over the years in, in immigration and, and whatnot, our, sport, our, our country has, has changed drastically. And, you know, I'm a prime example of that. My family came over to America in 1966 from Cuba. And so over time, uh, the, the demographic of our country has changed. And, and I think NASCAR has, has saw that and, and, and understood that and really embraced it and, and tried to make their sport. I think their sport all along has always been an all-American sport. And all of America has changed over the years. And so now to, to create that inclusion um, and equality for our sport, is it's making our sport you know, still the same old typical all-American sport. Just all of America is changing. Over to Mr. Pockress. Hi, Bob Pockress, ESPN. With uh, RPM getting more and more autonomous, uh, just how do you guys do you feel like you're behind at all when a rule change like this happens? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, obviously, you can look at our results and compare them to, to years past, and, and the uh, the proof is in the pudding, sort of. Um, you know, we've, we we started off the the year um, running respectable like we did last year and then we've got off and and it seems like the harder we try the harder we work the harder we try and figure it out um the worse we get and then we kind of revert back to last year well that's that's no good either because everybody else has made progress so if you go back to what you did last year you're behind still so um absolutely we we are we are behind we're aware of it um it's not from lack of effort I can tell you that we got guys uh, back at the shop burning burning the midnight oil. Um, you know we're 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 working these guys to death to to try and get back on track and get more speed in our cars and uh, get our cars back to running top 15 like we could for the last two years. So um, the efforts there, the 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 ambition, the willingness to do whatever it takes to to get back on track. Um, is certainly there, so I'm really proud of our, our company and our race team uh, for that. Um, but yeah, we, we, the sport is tough, and uh, there, there's there's certainly uh, some some steps uh, along the way that uh, you know we, we we've either missed or, or miscalculated um, in getting more autonomous, and and so we've uh, we've we've not went back to the drawing board. We're just still at the drawing board, um, and and trying to figure out uh, really how to get back to a baseline for us. And in years past, it was pretty easy 
for us to try things and, and sort of try and figure out how to get faster. And, and on a race weekend, if, if we were off, we could always kind of get back to a baseline. And we knew that if we put that package or that setup in the car, we could go run 15th. Uh, meanwhile, we were trying to figure out ways to go run 10th. Uh, right now, we don't have that. We don't have anything that we can just go bolt in the car and, and go race and, and feel good about it. So uh, certainly still looking for a baseline and, and trying to find some more speed in our cars. All right. Uh, any other questions? We'll go back to Stan Creekmore. Eric, Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. Compare, if you will, what you're feeling today on this track versus what you would have felt at uh, Bristol or Martinsville or, or Richmond. I is it similar with, with <laughs> the speeds in the, co you know? Uh, no, I don't know if you've notice but we're going like 220 here and at bristol we go like 140 so it's very different <laughs> um yeah the uh you know the the short track racing um with the with the lower downforce i think uh you know has has been better because uh, of the tire that goodyear's been able to bring we've got a lot of fall off um and, and that's been fun uh the challenges you know what you've seen uh over the course of the year has been to just continue to try and get the mile and a half two mile racing uh better and i think this is another uh, attempt at that so uh, like i said a few minutes ago to Go 220 mile an hour, absolutely, it's fast, no doubt. Uh, but the fact that we're slowing down uh, so much to go through the corner because the, the car, the, the, the air pushing down on the car created by that, the downforce is so much less, our cars will not allow us to, to run you know wide open uh, because there's just not enough grip there. So you kind of have to revert back to mechanical grip um, and, and, you know, setups over the last several years have been more driven towards arrow, 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 arrow. Um, and just, you know, don't worry about mechanical grip. Just get your car sealed off on the racetrack and, and create as much downforce as you can. And we're starting to see that trend sort of back up from there. And, and, and you know, as you take more downforce away, it becomes a little less important. And you really got to get grip another way. And so for us, it's, it, we're reverting back to getting mechanical grip. All right, any final questions for Mr. Almarola? All right, Eric, thanks All for right. coming in today. Yep. Thanks, guys.